I was thinking about this a lot last night. It really wouldn't take much to make me a conservative. <gasps> I know, like, the liberals and progressives that listen to the show are like, WHAT ARE YOU SAYING? NO! No, but calm down, I'll explain what I mean, and then hopefully some of you will agree with me, we'll see. Uh, but I think conservatism is rational when a society already makes sense. You see what I'm saying? So there are all types of possible definitions of conservatism. Uh, you know, there's one that's embracing traditional values. That's one way to define conservatism. Or in favor of smaller government. That's another way to define it. But I'm specifically talking about the definition that is more or less, hey, chill, let's not change anything. Or let's not change much. Now, progressive would mean, hey, we're in favor of progress, we're in favor of changing things to make them better, right? Uh, whereas, again, conservatism could be, let's calm down, let's don't change anything, or at least uh, don't change much is probably a better way of putting it. And if you go by that definition, it really wouldn't take much for me to be a conservative. So what do I mean by that? Well, I always mention to you guys that if we were talking about international politics, if you're talking about Western Europe, for example, within the context of their... I'm probably a moderate, a centrist. I might even just flat out vote for the conservative parties if I lived in Denmark or if I lived in Norway or Iceland or Sweden. In France and Britain, I'd probably vote for whatever centrist party or probably like the Social Democrat Party. But those place, places have like, you know, a lot of them do, communist parties or flat out socialist parties. I wouldn't go all the way left. I'd probably go center left in those places and right wing in other places, depending on which uh, place we're talking about, which country we're talking about. And the reason why I say that it wouldn't take much for conservatism to be rational is because after you've set up a system that already makes sense, you shouldn't change it, right? And that's almost true by definition. If you have something that already makes sense, why would you mess with it? Why would you try to change it at all? And in that respect, I think I'm a lot more to the right on the political spectrum than a lot of uh, progressives. So, for example, people who like buy into that zeitgeist movement thing where they say they like actually want a communal society. They want like a post-industrial society where it's like, you know, seriously, like we kind of share everything. It's almost the abolition of private property. You have people like Noam Chomsky who uh, I read a, a whole bunch of different Chomsky books. His ones on foreign policy are awesome and I agree with 100%. But when he gets into like systems that could replace uh, what we have in the world, uh, he kind of loses me. He's uh, what's called, I don't want to get too wonky, but one of them is anarcho-syndicalism. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, a non-statist form of socialism uh, where everything is community owned and, you know, uh, it's just, I don't agree with those people. And the reason why I don't agree with them is because I actually think capitalism, you need it to a certain extent. I think that uh, in some areas, capitalism makes perfect sense. Again, if you're talking about making couches, I don't want the government to make a couch. It would suck. Uh, if you're talking about making sneakers or basketball jerseys or lamps or TVs, the government can't do it. I mean, look at the cars that came out of Soviet Russia. They were horrible. They were laughable. Why? Because there was no competition to make it better. Now, that doesn't mean that in every uh, area competition is good. We know that it doesn't work in many areas. And this is where my left-wing side comes in, where I say, look, some things you need to be nationalized. So you need to have a health insurance system and a health care system can't be private. That's insane. You can't have a for-profit system where the motive is, hey, health insurance companies, deny people care, even though they've been paying premiums forever, deny people care so you can make extra money because you have a fiduciary responsibility to your shareholders to do that. That's a perverse incentive. You have to have uh, the prison system that has to be government. It has to be, uh, because you can't set up a perverse incentive for people to make profit to lock more people up, because then they're going to want to lock more people up for bullshit reasons. The military, it has to be public. Infrastructure, it has to be public. This all has to be government. Uh, you know, I am to the left of it, the United States because I think education should be fully public. I think it's horrible to have it uh, for profit. That's a perverse incentive. It becomes like a scam at that point. Even daycare. Daycare should be uh, something that's public because you don't want, you know, your citizens scrambling to just have their kid taken care of while they're trying to make a goddamn living. That's crazy. Um, and there are other things. I mean, we could talk about possibly, you know, nationalizing oil and energy sources because, of course, that's, it comes out of 
the ground, which is our land, our public land, but ExxonMobil in the U.S. just sweeps it up and says, yeah, we're, we'll take this and we'll make all the money from it. Yeah, but that was in our land, buddy. What do you mean? Why are you making... So there are a lot of things where you should nationalize and it should be government, and there's a lot of areas where it should be capitalist. And in that respect, this is why I say conservatism would make sense if you lived in a society that had universal health care, universal education, universal daycare, maybe universal insurance, you know, things like that where... You don't have communism or pure socialism or some sort of abolished private property system. I actually, I'm kind of a consumerist and a materialist in many ways. I wouldn't want to get rid of that completely. But the, the, the goal is to create a society where the right things are government and the right things are in the private sector and everything should be fine from there. And in that context, I would be a conservative. And I would say, hey, if you want to change this system, you're kind of crazy because what we got here is a good deal. And again, that's where it gets to equality of opportunity versus equality of results. I'm in favor of equality of opportunity. So if you get the same uh, you know, starting position and the same chance as anybody else, then if you don't make much, uh, much of it because you don't want to, okay, it is what it is. Sorry, buddy, you're not gonna make the same amount of money as somebody who busted their ass. So uh, I, I'm curious. I don't know how many people agree with me on this. I know there's a lot of listeners to the show who are probably to the left of me on many issues. So we'll see, man.